Since the advent of the aromatase inhibitors in the adjuvant therapy of breast cancer and in treatment of recurrent breast cancer that's hormone receptor positive, one of the issues that uh, obviously for many, many women is a problem uh, is arthritis and myalgias. Those are the two most common reasons that women can't continue for a total of five years on the aromatase inhibitors. There are several 3,000 women studies of the aromatase inhibitors versus tamoxifen, and the vast majority of women are able to complete the five years of either drug. However, the aromatase inhibitors have a slightly higher dropout rate of about 5 or 10 percent, and that is generally from arthritis and muscle pain. When one is going to, going to be on a drug for five years, obviously you want it to be relatively well tolerated or patients will just quit taking it. And there have been a number of studies looking at dropout rates of, a, of the aromatase inhibitors that may be 30 or 40 percent by the time you get to three or four years. So I always ask women how much trouble they're having. For most women, it's a nuisance level sort of a little stiff in the morning, and then five or 10 minutes later, they're okay. But if they have a lot more trouble than that, there are, there are two options. One is to try one of the other aromatase inhibitors, which may work 10 or 20% of the time. The other is to go to tamoxifen. Tamoxifen is the older drug that was compared in a trial called the ATAC trial, and the aromatase inhibitors in postmenopausal women were about 3 to 4% better than tamoxifen, but not 10 or 20 or 30% better. So infinitely better to have a woman complete the five years on tamoxifen than not complete the five years on the aromatase inhibitors. The latest update of the ATAC trial is that the aromatase inhibitors are still about 3 to 4% better as far as decreasing the risk of recurrence, but the nine-year update, that had not translated into a survival benefit. It probably will at some point, but for many women, the switch to tamoxifen is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. The other long-term side effect, or the, the long-term side effect, is that the aromatase inhibitors are mildly anti-bone so that we always follow bone density every year or two. And if the bone density uh, begins to decrease or starts out at an abnormal level, one can add bisphosphonates uh, such as actinel or Fosamax. The other issue that's a major issue is the vaginal dryness that many women get from very, very low levels of estrogen, which is the mechanism of action of the aromatase inhibitors. This can be a very difficult problem, and often the easiest thing to do is to just switch to tamoxifen, and then one can safely add something like Vagifem, which is a uh, vaginal estrogen preparation that for most women will re-epithelialize the vagina and make sex much more comfortable. So anytime we have a woman that's going to be on a drug for five years, you want to be sure that the toxicity is at such a level that they'll maintain that treatment, and if not, consider going to something different. Hi, I'm Dr. Jay Harness, and I want to share with you important information that I believe that every newly diagnosed patient with breast cancer needs to know. I'm a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. And I want every woman to know about personalized breast cancer treatment and the genomic test. A test that helps guide a woman and her doctor to the best treatment options for her. Pass it on.